I went to undergraduate at a liberal arts college. I took a lot of different kinds of courses. I liked geology quite a bit. I took a couple of years after school and worked. I worked construction. It was the early 80s. It was a recession at the time. And I hung around, so to speak, at Berkeley, uh, where there were lectures in geology. This guy came visiting from Purdue University, and he needed somebody to do experimental work. He said, apply to, to the PhD program there. So I did. That was where I really just started doing hardcore science. I'm a geochemist, and I, do, I look at the elements, the abundances of the elements, where they're distributed among minerals, and I look at the isotopes that are in the rocks and how they've been fractionated one from another, and how they have, in the case of radioactive elements, how they have decayed over time. So this gives us chronological information. It tells us how things crystallized, how fast they crystallized. This is applicable over a wide, wide range of disciplines. It's applicable to planetary science, the field of petrology and mineralogy as well. And it's also, of course, applicable to meteorites. And that's my forte. That's what I do most of my work on, is meteorites and the earliest, earliest rocks formed in the solar system. The meteorites are the really the, the leftovers of the formation of the solar system. Their composition is a lot like this, that of the sun without all the gases. And they even contain bits and pieces of other stars, little grains that were formed in the atmospheres of other suns before the sun, our sun, formed. What we're trying to do is figure out how planets form around stars. That's the fundamental problem in the origin of of life, what planets become habitable, which ones have water, which ones don't, why do they have water, why do they not have water. And this is something we really don't understand very well, especially about our own star. We have a lot of data, but we don't quite have the right dynamical framework to place it in. My work is highly collaborative. I, I work with uh, scientists from all over the world, and I'm very lucky in being able to have really smart people to help me understand what I'm doing and, and hopefully I can help them understand what they're doing. Being intellectually curious is the most important thing, I think, in science generally. You can become good at something, but unless you're curious about extending it to other things, you really don't have the passion that you need to, to do an interesting and creative and new work. And I hope I have some of that. I think that it's very important for people in a position like mine to think really hard about passing on the things we know how to do and things we've learned to the young people coming up behind us. And that's becoming more important to me as I get older. And I'd, of course, I'd like to write the definitive paper on the origin of the solar system. Uh, that's a tricky business, and that'll have lots of co-authors.